So this large box just arrived. Let's see what's in here. I think I know, which is why I'm keen to open it. I'm going to have to get his real knife. This is sacrilege. Well, packaging looks reasonable. Plenty of bubble wrap. Hopefully plenty. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not quite as thick as I would like, but it seems like they've made a decent effort. Alright, there's a the rear. Yeah, well, I think they've wrapped it pretty well actually. That's not bad. There's many layers of bubble wrap on this. I think it's okay. Obviously it's a used device, which is fine. Just a bit more extra around it to help protect it. Nice, I mean they've actually made an effort, that's good. This is the important part. This end of it. It's got a bit of film on the screen, not going to peel that off just yet. But, it's a Keefley. DMM7510, so it's a 7.5 digit multimeter. I've been quite happy with my signal and signal digit on my bench here for quite a while now. But I've been doing some stuff recently and I was thinking, I'm kind of running out of digits. I need more digits, I need more precision. And, I'll, and a bit more warm up time, well a faster warm up time and more precision would be useful. I decided to splash out and get one of these things. Now obviously it's used, it's not new. So let's power it up and see if the thing actually works, make sure the touch screen's still good, that sort of stuff, because you never quite know what you're going to get. The description was basically, it's a used multimeter. There is no other information. There's nothing about being faulty or working condition or calibrated or if there's any problems with it. Completely blank. Now I did get a better deal on this thing. I did get the price dropped a little bit. Um, I did an offer and um, strangely I think I must have screwed up or something on eBay because the actual seller because I did an offer and then they changed the listing price to be below the price I'd offered for or something. I, I don't know what I did. Anyway, it was, it was a bit weird because they'd what they actually done is that I'd made them an offer of like sixteen hundred dollars US. They did a counter offer of seven of seventeen fifty. But then they also at the same time they lowered the price on the listing to seventeen hundred. I got it for seventeen hundred. I don't know why they did a counter offer of seventeen fifty when they're gonna drop the price on the listing to seventeen hundred. So I got it for seventeen hundred bucks. So hopefully it's okay. Uh I'm really hoping so. So here's the rear panel. So you've got power there. I'm not sure about the ratings on the voltage. I think it's automatic voltage. I think China's 240 volt anyway. That's where it came from, it's China. Yep, yeah, see, 100 to 240 volt, great. There's nothing I have to do. So I can just plug power straight in. Obviously got another point here they were using before. But yeah, you've got rear inputs. You've got some big fuses here, because this does some nice currents. You've got two fuses there for 11 amp and three and a half amp ranges. Digital I.O. USB, Ethernet, TSP link, which I don't have anything of anyway. IEEE. Nice, so let's plug power in and see if it actually works. Power it on. Oh, it's booting. The screen's working. 25 watts being pulled out. It's at least booting. Um, hey, touch screen's working. Oh, brilliant. It works. Okay, at least that much works. Let's inject the voltage and see if it's actually receiving any voltages and stuff, see if it looks like it's right. Ian Johnson's PDVS2 mini here. Turn this on. Zero, it's looking pretty much there. Don't think I might just turn this on, so it's going to drift a little bit. You should see that. There we go. One volt. You should be able to see the drift as this thing's warming up. Look at that. Okay, it's got the 10 volts. I'll leave it sitting there for a bit. And it is at least working. You can see how fast this thing is, it's incredible. And seven and a half digits. Now these are apparently optimized for I think it's one power line cycle or five power line cycles. Um, they're optimized for that kind of speed. So they're extremely fast. I think if you try and go to like a lower power line cycle, I think the noise ratio increases or something slightly. Don't know why that is. But you can see that this is coming back down again now. I'm not sure if it's a combination of this meter warming up. So I'm not quite sure which one of these things is actually stabilizing, probably a bit better off. But you can see it's changing, it's getting closer and closer. So that's excellent. Um, is at least working on that, which is a great sign. 
Now I did read the manual briefly, some bits of the manual, because there's a massive manual on this thing. And I think warm up time is stated as being 90 minutes to specification or something like that. I think that's what it said. Um, so one and a half hours to meet specification. So that's fine. Now the pictures which I saw online for this thing had different posts on here. It had the ones about the extra ring inside. Um, I don't think it really matters that much. I'm not sure which is the newer version or the older version. I don't know. But at some point Keith Lee changed the kind of posts they have on these for the bananas. Um, I'm not too sure about which version this is, whether it's early or late, I don't know. But um, the picture had the other type, but then there's, there's loads of Chinese sellers selling both types. But this guy had a stack of these things for sale, so I guess he's got like a big lot from a factory or something, and he's just selling them all off, so I guess it's a case of whichever one he happened to get lucky with. So I'm going to take the screen protector off, it's bubbling anyway. So that was interesting. I think I changed then as I peeled it off. I think it's the set it detected this thing being removed and effectively touched something. Because when you get these sorts of things, you don't actually know what you're going to get. I don't know if I can put this back on again without getting the bubbles in it. I'll try. I'd like to keep a screen protector on it. Yeah, anyway. It's working, that's the main thing, I'm pleased about that. So let me get a resistance on here as well, just check it with the resistance, make sure that works. I've switched up this decade resistor here, this is a high precision thing, so we'll see what we get in two wire. So we'll set to zero right now, yep, so that looks like it's kind of working. Um, there will be a way of nulling this out, I just don't know how to do it yet. I'm probably missing something obvious somewhere. This auto zero turned on as well, so I'll, I don't know. I'll go through the menus and see what it's actually set up. But okay, let's try ten ohms. Oh, sorry, one ohm. Get it right. One ohm steps. I think a different decade with box. So here you go. That's looking all right. Tens. Yep. Look how fast that is. It's incredible. Look how fast that is. That's absolutely stunning. That is. This has to be the fastest mold we ever got. Look how quick it is. Brilliant. I'm very happy with that. That's working really well. It does have a fan. It's audible certainly blowing a fair bit of speed but it's not too bad it's probably not really much worse than my Sigma 3065X not really I think once we're in the shelf that will help baffle it as well all right we'll try for this uh, 200 picofarad cap we'll shove that in there first 191 okay it's not too bad it's close if I stick this lead in and then stick the lead into the capacitor instead does that change anything? Now we're getting 200. So, just the lead capacitance is the factor there. All right, let's try one nanofarad. Look how quickly that thing's updating. It's ridiculous. This is a 20 nanofarad. Yep. And one microfarad. Yeah, that's all working. I think this update speed is a bit silly though, isn't it? It's just it's just too damn quick. I'm gonna have to do some settings on this and slow it down a bit maybe. <laughs> but it's impressive it works that quickly. Wow. Very nice. I'm gl I'm I'm glad I uh pushed my funds a bit to get this thing. Um yeah. Spent more money this month on this thing. All of it on this. Expensive device, but it looks very good. So I've just told it to do two readings, and it seems to have slowed down significantly though. It's not for about two readings, but anyway. So it's now got averaging. Look at that. Much better. Um, and I'll go back to this one here, which is the one nanofarad. Here we go, see it's jumping around. I do have a lot of noise in this area, so it does not surprise me that it's a bit noisy. So uh, anyway, that's looking pretty good. Happy with that. 
This thing's running on quite an old firmware, 1.6.3D. Um, I've got much newer firmware than this, so I might actually have to look at upgrading this to a newer one. That might solve some issues, potentially. I don't actually know what the differences are, so now I know what firmware version this is. I might look at the change logs and see what's actually changed since this version, but this is quite an old one. Several years old. I don't know, it's probably about four or five years old, I think, right? So, that's fine. Well, I found the settings to the re relative mode and stuff like that. It's all over here. You've got to swipe this bottom screen across. This graphing. Some other stuff over here. Statistics. And secondary functions. So, cool. That's all in there. But at least like it, it looks like it's working. That's good. The backlight brightness is only set to 50%. So, although to me it actually looks fine. Right now it looks better to you on camera because you're straight on. And this film is actually reflecting quite a bit. I might actually, I might leave that off. It is pretty ugly. If it is brand new, it might be right, but uh, yeah, I might take that film off. But um, yeah, it looks like it's doing alright. I'm happy with that. I think that was a good purchase.